Oh, hi. My name is Anza. I'm from Norway. And for the last couple of months, I have been doing my master thesis here at Lund University, LTH, at the Biomedical Engineering Facility. My main object was to create a prototype that can measure the knee joint angle on children with cerebral palsy. CP is a disorder of movement that affects coordination by the lack of muscle control which originates from the brain. Stiff muscles, weak muscles, tremors and seizures are examples of symptoms in children with CP. In Sweden there are approximately 200 children born every year with CP and in Norway there are 120 children. CP patients have knee joint disorders such as stiff knee gait and flexion and extension deformities. Physicians use a agoniometer to measure and evaluate the knee joint angle in children with CP. Now, since they are unable to measure for a longer period of time, this is where the idea came that why not create a user-friendly device using modern technology that can measure the knee joint angle for a longer period, in this case 24 hours, while the children are doing their daily activities, like just having a normal day. This could help physicians and doctors to provide a better plan for rehabilitation treatments. And the technology that I'm talking about is called IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. IMUs provide 2 to 9 degrees of freedom, which basically refers to the number of different ways an object can orient in the 3D space. It is a model that fuses accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer together and presents data in the form of Euler vectors or quaternions. Quaternion consists of four scalar numbers, three imaginary, and one real. So how to measure the knee joint angle? Well, the idea is to place two IMUs, one on the thigh and the other one on the shank. The microcontroller that was used was Arduino Nano and uh, that's basically where I programmed the quaternion data from one of the sensors and multiplied it with the absolute value of the other quaternion values from the other sensors. And through that I was able to obtain the angle. Now to test if the angles were correct, I taped the IMUs on the goniometer and created a real-time chart using LabVIEW. Now, humans have a maximum flexion angle somewhere between 120 to 150 degrees and the full extension around 5 to 10 degrees. The IMUs can measure in a range between 1 to 180 degrees. Uh, I also ran some tests on an IRB120 robot from the robotics lab at LTH and I got very accurate results. Next step was to run some tests on a human subject. Now, since I couldn't find any guinea pig, I decided to turn myself into one and test those awesome IMUs. But before that, I implemented a micro SD breakout board that saved data every 10th second to avoid slow readings. I ordered a plastic box, drilled some holes in it, added a light emitting diode and a switch button to pause and record data. Now, everything is set. I have a hinged wrap around knee brace with uh, two IMUs. So once the sensors are ready, the LED will start blinking. That means that the sensors are calibrated and they're okay to run. I switch this button on the right side. The LED will start to it will stop blinking and now I can just walk and let's try it, why not? Now if I want to take a break, uh, I can just switch this button. The microcontroller is still running and this is mainly because if you want to do long term measurements, maybe you want a break, you need a break, you need to go to the toilet in case you power it off and then turn it off then you have to recalibrate the IMU and in case you don't do it properly then the readings 
will get errors. So if I press it, I can walk again. In the beginning, my outdoor walking tests were very accurate without any drifting errors. However, once I started walking outdoors for longer periods with continuous movements, the data started to get drifting errors since the auto calibration of the sensors could not keep up with the non-linear movements. The drifting errors were occurring from magnetometer and gyroscope. Magnetometer provides support to reduce drift from gyroscope, however, it can be easily disturbed from other magnetic materials. I tried putting magnetometer into sleep mode using only gyro and accelerometer. This, however, caused the gyro to get off calibrated after some time, mainly due to sharp movements, tilts, or vibrations when walking. After running tests for several weeks without any success, I ordered another sensor BNO080. This is said to handle motion tracking in far better way than BNO50. According to Bosch, this is specifically made for drones or VR that needs a lot of motion. Due to my deadline, I was only able to test two of its main function, rotational vector mode that uses 9 degrees of freedom and game rotation vector with 6 degrees of freedom, meaning without magnetometer. I was able to get far better results than BNO50. However, it also had drifting errors if I turned off the magnetometer but gave very accurate results when it was used in 9 degrees of freedom, unlike BNO050. So what is my conclusion? Can IMUs be used for longer measurements of knee joint angle? The conclusion is that it's hard to draw any conclusion. Wait, did that even make any sense? Step one is to always calibrate them before doing the measurements. Uh, the second thing that you need to remember is in what kind of environment are you doing your measurements. If it's a place which doesn't have any magnetic disturbances, then you should definitely go for the 9 degrees of freedom mode with magnetometer. However, if it's a place where there are a lot of magnetic disturbances, then you should try the six degrees of freedom, meaning gyroscope and accelerometer. I couldn't fully test BNO080 sensor. Uh, it definitely has potential. It is definitely better than BNO050. Uh, by testing them further, there is a chance that they might succeed in doing long-term measurements of the knee. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating it. Bye-bye.